Oh, hey there guys and girls. Oh, new day, new project. Um, let me guess what we're doing. <coughs> we're not doing that, but, yeah, excuse me. <laughs> we're um, building a base for a shed, um, but no ordinary shed. We're getting a shed like, uh, like this one here that we've got next to, uh, probably since the last video. You remember the one from the uh, washing machine that we did? That was actually done there, well, you know. And now there's a shed there, so yeah, that's my sister's um, pet project shed. So yeah, we're, we're, instead of doing bri bricks and slabs, we're going to build a proper base. And um, we're, 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 uh, we're, you know, we're building it all out. We've got to obviously level it, because the garden's like a bloody cliff face, sloping down the hill. So we've got to put more this end than we have got this end. We're sort of doing it. But anyway, um, the shed is going to be a bit like a Roman uh, bathhouse, I guess, like an outdoor bathhouse. It's going to be. It's going to be heated with a um, a wood-burning boiler, which produces is it 30 kilowatts? Is it? Yeah, about 30 kilowatts worth of heat, and you uh, you burn soft woods in it, <clears throat> so you get more heat out of them. Uh, you know, in a short time. That is right, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, the heat comes out of them a bit quicker. Um, obviously, it's quicker to burn, but you get a lot more heat out of it in a short space of time. And we're going to uh, we're going to have a, a water thermal store of about uh, what is it, 200 liters in it, a bit more. Yeah, and that water is never going to actually be used for for the bath. Or yeah, the yeah, that that thermal storing water will never it's actually just literally be literally a thermal store. So we'll probably yeah. add an antifreeze to that. Yeah. <clears throat> We're going to use a, uh, a boiler heat plate. Yeah, uh, heat, heat exchanging. exchanging plate. Mm. Uh, if we need more than one, then we'll double them up. Yeah, they are pretty efficient things. Was it 98% efficient? Something ridiculous there? Pretty though? efficient, yeah. yeah. Um, and we'll just transfer the heat from the thermal store to, uh, to the hot water supply. Yeah. Basically. So inside this thing we're going to have a, probably a sink, a wash basin kind of thing, shower, uh, depending on room, maybe a bath or something, maybe. Now obviously we can't have running water to this. Yeah, so we've got to literally store the water um, in like an outdoor container. We're going to use an IBC, a um, thousand, was it a thousand litre IBC? Yeah. Which we can just keep topping up over, you know, over time. Uh, we could even get the whole system running on rainwater, which we collect from the roof, you know, run it through a dead simple filter, like a sand filter or something. And the plan and, uh, would be a, a UVC circulator, so yeah. it doesn't. Yeah, it doesn't. Go uh, mank. Yeah, say, so yeah, it doesn't you know, gum up or whatever. But uh, it'll be quite an interesting, uh, in interesting project. Um, <clears throat> maybe even turn it into a bit of a sauna, eh? That'd be pretty cool. Oh, right, eh? Yeah. So it's going to be a, an apex as opposed to that pent. Yeah, so that means the... Uh, We're going to have the apex running lengthways, like, yeah. almost like a summer house. So if you look at that roof there, it's going to go like that and then like that. Not on the edge of the, not on the edge where it's going to go up like this, like this shed here. It's going to be that kind of roof, but sideways on. Yeah, rotate that roof 90 degrees and you've got what that one's going to be like. Um, the shed's going to be a little bit, little, little bit bigger than this, quite a couple of feet. Um, I'm actually buying the shed brand new. Pretty much all the sheds we've got here was bought second hand. Um, with I think that shed there being the oldest and probably the one that's in the best in the in the best condition, minus this one. Um, that shed down there was, um, Christ, it was my mum's, my mum's house when my mum lived with a mum and dad. Um, it's probably getting on for this, you know, what do you reckon, what was it, something like 1969 or something? Something ridiculous. That shed, it didn't look it, but it's incredible how, how well, long it survived for. <clears throat> this had some damage at the bottom, but you know, it happens over time. When we were kids, I'm pretty sure we kicked some of the panels in and stuff, and dragging stuff in and out of it. Um, you know, uh, we've got this shed, which we got a couple of months, you know, months ago. They put it up. Um, this is a nice shed. Yeah, this is a very nice yeah, shed. Top, full on Tongan groove. Tongan groove. Yeah, it's very built, built to last shed. That very nice. 
Um, this one here is just a cheap shed. We used to use it to keep the ride on mower in, but we don't have one of those anymore. Yeah, it's got one of those uh, compacted cardboard roofs, which is all got holes in it now. It's starting to mould through. Yeah, mold you, through it. you mold could put pack. your finger through that, which I'm not going to do. Yeah, you can see the whole thing moves. And uh, not very nice. I've got to fix that. Yeah, we prefer um, proper tongue groove roof on this one. Yeah. Yeah, proper tongue and groove, which is quite nice. 19mm uh, thick floor, which will be good. As you can see, we've got a couple more sheds down there too, plus the chickens and the rabbits and whatever. Um, that's another old shed. I can't remember how old that one is, but we've had it for ages and ages. There's a couple more sheds around the corner, which are, again, ancient. Um, but again, if you keep treating them, they last, they last quite a while. But, uh, all in total, we've got... How many sheds have we got now? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine sheds in total now. Mm. And then we're going to have another one to make it ten. So millions of outdoor sheds. We have a lot of crap that we store. This one will probably be used partially for storage as well. Yeah, yeah. But it's going to have a lino floor in there. And, you know, my sister's got a lino floor in her one, which is quite nice. Lino floor, underlay. Uh, we're also going to be doing quite a fun bit of insulation on this yeah so usually in a shed like this you'll, um, you'll, well there's not really any walls that yeah, have well got stuff against them you but see the back wall there how uh, you've got the uh, the outer grooving panels the tongue and groove there's a little bit of a gap up there you can just see and you've got the structure well we're gonna actually put hardboard across a hardboard that. across the structure and in the cavity inside we're gonna blow in using a blower um, polystyrene. polystyrene balls, yeah, be be beads or whatever. Fire resistant ones, obviously. Yeah, uh, We've got the crow down there, which is apparently uh, one of the best insulations you can use. Should yeah. be easy to do, and uh, it's cheap as well compared to the polystyrene boards that you buy. Yeah, I'm not sure what we're doing with the window as such, but um, the guy said if we, you know, if you've got a um, Excuse me, if you've got a, uh, a PVC window, they will install it when they put the shed up, but I don't think we've got one handy, have we? Uh, not one that works. Mm. They're all broke. But if down the line we had, to, we had to put one in, we could do it. I mean, expanding foam is an amazing tool. Yeah. Um, you know, you just make it out of wood, screw it in as best you can, you only know, really need four screws. Mm. And then you would um, just nice and simply expand your foam around the thing. I mean, one thing we was planning on doing at first was filling the walls with expanding foam. But yeah. Should you have ever needed access to them, it would have been practically impossible. Yeah, and not only that, but you can get damp. Yeah, that's yeah, it. Polystyrene will let it. It, it breathe. Yeah. Um, so yeah. Wolf's doing things. We've already got a big blower, which I'm happy about. Yeah, bouncy castle blower kind of thing. It's uh -huh. nice and uh, good. Um, just blow the beads in with. Yeah, we just feed them directly through the fan. Yeah. It'd be quite interesting that. <laughs> of course, that was salvaged. Yeah, that was a, that was a pretty much a free. Pretty much dumped at the side of the road. Yeah, we just stopped and asked. Bit of fixing work. Yeah, a bit of welding on it because it had gone rusty. But there you go, nice fancy castle blower kind of thing. Full on metal as well. No, no annoying plastic parts. Yeah, we've had the plastic ones in the past. They're just snapping off. Yeah, they just the motors sag down and they start rocking around and then the blades catch start making the right racket as you can see we're using nicer uh, stakes yeah. mm -hmm. still with the leaves on them natural stakes natural stakes yeah well, it's going to be an interesting little project but um yeah anything else to say about it really just if you're interested uh, guys keep watching i guess um well i guess yeah we'll do an update on it again yeah if you're interested guys keep on watching and we'll see how it goes it's a shame we've not got a uh, one of these newfangled gopros or something you know could have done a set it up on probably a chair over there or something and do a time lapse so you can see it gradually appear in front of your screens it'll be quite interesting that but uh no we've, we've not got anything like that um yeah so keep watching guys and girls I'll uh, I'll catch you later on. So guys and girls, we are now onto the part where we're putting the um, 
basically a protective barrier on top which stops the membrane, the waterproof membrane, from getting cut by the sharp stones. Um, now on this method you don't have to, you know, uh, smooth it down using the uh, whacker thing there. Vibration plate thing, majingi. But uh, we're doing it just because it's nice and smooth, you know. What does it matter? And um, we bought some sand to do it, but we ran out, so we're having to use ballast now. Now there's no, to, no to against using ballast, you can use it, but um, obviously they say sand is better apparently. But it's okay. It doesn't matter okay uh, as well if there's a few gaps in it here and there. As long as there's no sharp stones, that's, that's all you're protecting against doing this. Um, so yeah, not really much else to say I guess. Uh, we did kind of put the shuttering up a little bit more. Um, although we need to build it higher of course. But yeah. process now. As you can see we've got the um, waterproof membrane down. We've got the cement slowly mixing in the bodge mixer which many 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 moons ago used to have a petrol engine on there but now it's got an electric motor bodge to it. The actual pulley that's there is that loose it rocks. You can probably see it moving slightly. It's uh, the, the actual shaft that goes through is uh, very safe as you can see, but it's um, it's very uh, it's very warm. So yeah, interesting. We had to go and buy a new belt for it too because the old belt was like wow, so bad. Uh, 1980, this uh, cement mixer was made, so. And it's had a lot of use. Everything you see around here that's, you know, that's been built, besides the house, was built using this cement mixer. All the bases for the sheds, you know, we've got a base there, and all the sheds that run along that wall. Um, if you see on my other videos, they were all done for this mixer. Oh, and there we go with the... Um, Mixing in whatever this is, reinforcement. Fiber reinforcement. I think he's supposed to use more than that. Probably so. That one little bag is meant to do three meters square. Really? Yep. Okay. Looks like it's mixing quite well. It, it works better now than most actually spinning the right way around. It does. Um, as this, when you first start this mixer up, the mixer spins the opposite way. So what you have to do is you have to manually turn it around the right way, which is this way, it's going now, and then plug it in. And then the motor decides to spin this way around. Because this thing used to be petrol. Yeah, because it used to be petrol. And now it's converted to electric. Many years ago. Many, many years ago. 
pretty much its whole life is spun in the wrong direction. Yeah. <laughs> It works well. <laughs> wow, it's struggling, Ali. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, the belt is very loose. Let's not overload it. Yeah, let's not do. Pour this mix in then. Yeah. Okay, guys and girls. How to make it quieter. Guys and girls. Okay guys and girls, as you can see it is nightfall <laughs> and we've got uh, probably I'd say probably about half done to be fair um, given that we have got quite a bit of a dip there uh, getting this level was just keep in mind we are absolute amateurs we've never done this before in our lives we can see we've got a bit of a ripply kind of thing going on here but it's fresh shed it doesn't matter that much if it was like for a floor of a workshop i'd be concerned but even then i think i just put some of that auto level and stuff all over the floor and just leave it to do its, its magic but it's fresh shed so it doesn't matter that much as long as it is level in the sense of you know, not doing this sort of thing, you know. Yeah, that's it, so the timber yeah, isn't flexing on the shed. That's it, yeah, so the timbers aren't flexing on the shed. I am now absolutely covered in stuff, and I've been doing my favourite lot. I've been wearing Crocs, because... Uh, They're the true workers. The well. true workers, that's it. Because we, we, we wear Crocs here at this house. Um, to, we, we use, we weld, uh, you know, welding Crocs and everything, well I do anyway. But, um... They used to have the ones with the holes in it. Yeah, the uh, the motor fell off um, as I was using this, which was quite interesting. Um, because the uh, the two bolts uh, thingy and the motor just went dum. And we, we call it auto leveling when it does that. Is that unscrewing itself? It looks like it is. Yeah. <laughs> it does, doesn't it? It's yeah, quite nice that. <laughs> but yeah. Yeah. Oh dear. It's uh, literally. Earlier. It needs some maintenance. The motor was just working as an automatic tensioner. Tensioner, device, yeah. Just working on its own. <laughs> and using the weight of the motor to put the tension on the belt, it was quite hilarious. Good time, look, spanner's been left in it, actually. <laughs> <laughs> spanner's been left in it. Yeah. Is that some bloody concar I forgot to smooth down there? Yeah, it is a bit. Let's see if I can do it with my boot. Croc smoothing. Fiber reinforced. Yeah, this is fiber reinforced. There we go. Oh, this is croc smoothing lot. God, he does a good job and all. Another reason crocs are just brilliant, really. Yeah, look at that lot. That's okay. Like I say, it doesn't matter what this looks like. This is going to be a thing. As you can see in the middle, it's not very thick, but again, we don't care. This stuff yeah. is reinforced concrete. And this is yeah. really strong. This yeah, this base. stuff, this base is rock hard. It's this hard core that we've whacked down. It's yeah. surprisingly solid. And none of the shed bases we've done are uh, are whackered down. Well, this will be the first. This will be the first one. This is going to be the best shed base we've done, mm -hmm. even though it's built by like complete them have ever idiots. Been reinforced. No. Even a massive one that runs pretty yeah. much across the huge thing. Half the length of the garden. Yeah. Pretty much the width of it. Right, we've just got to take this thing up because this is one higher at the moment. Mm -hmm. um, we're going to take it up, chuck it in the garage. Hope, if they're open, we'll return it tomorrow. We'll return it, yeah, we'll return it tomorrow. Bloody handy though. I'd definitely look at getting one. Yeah. Get one spares and re or repairs and just fix it. Yeah. Take a generic engine anyway, you know, all these uh, Honda clones. Mm. So it's a dead nice engine to very easily to, easy to get hold of. This is a genuine Honda, but obviously a Honda clone will fit straight on it. Um, 
Yeah, I've, I know for a fact I've got a couple of Briggs and Stratton engines just lying around the place. Yeah, they usually have the same shaft on uh, anyway. Yeah, that's, that's the it. Most important part. Yeah, and it's belt driven, so you probably could get away with it. You just put bolts and you know washes under the thing to add the, add more tension on the belt. But um, anyway, it's time to call it a night. We need to get all this stuff, chuck it, you know, all the electrics. We need to just um, cover them all up and whatnot. Cement mix is full of bloody water, which I don't think it's going to solidify anytime soon. Um, but yeah, the old mixer does another thingy. <laughs> it's um, it sounds horrific. It now. is horrific. It is pretty pretty horrific. It's uh, but it does its yeah. job. I've known this cement mixer my whole life. I'm 28 years old now and I've known this cement mixer forever. Um, since the first time you know I can remember I always remembered this thingy and the sound this cement mixer makes is pretty distinctive. It's very distinctive. It makes like a grunting sound as it's going. Just fire it off. Just 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 wait wait take the sleeve lamp off. <laughs> just just fire it off. Listen to this sound. And it will it makes. run in the wrong direction yeah. because we're not starting it yeah. manually. Minus the motor noise. Yeah. It's the sound the uh, the gears make. See how nice and smooth it is. Yeah. It's a lovely thing to put your fingers into that, you know, you could put your finger right into that. Because that's how it normally starts, but if you turn it off. And you can actually see we've got there is meant to be. Yeah, there's a guard there. Oh, you don't want to call it a guard. Yeah. Turn it off and uh, not much safety with this thing. If we, from if we tip it up right and we make it spin the right way. If I can, uh, can't really do it with the camera. Can you pull it and just push that in with your boot? Where do I put my gloves? Oh, why is he worrying about gloves for? Just put the lead lamp down somewhere. Doesn't matter. I'm looking for my gloves. Well, you don't need gloves. It's over there, look, on the on the chair. Covered in crap. Oh, I've not got any gloves. Just pull it round with the thingy. I'll steady yeah, it so no, it don't no, fall just, over. Just, just push, push it on it with, the, uh, with, with the foot. And you can see, look, once you start it going by, you know, manually. Ugh, failure. It's, the belt's pretty tensioned up, so it's quite difficult. Yeah. There you go. And now I can spin the right way. <laughs> it's, it's, it's a manual... Um, Manual start. Man, manual start, yeah. And um, now there's just a narrow adaptable. Yeah. Thing. Litchy more safe. Now it spins the right way. And well, we've developed a new sound as well now. It's like a, a metal on metal squeaky sound. You're not happy. It, there it are really, no bearings in it. Yeah, there are no bearings in it copper whatsoever. It's, bearings. Yeah, it's just literally all it had was some copper pipe just hammered into it just to, to take the play up. It's good. And I bet there's absolutely none left in there at all. Oh. It wouldn't take much to actually put a bearing on it, you know. Good old Compton motor, that. Yeah, the motor does good. Quarter horsepower. Yeah, it's old school, that kid. Yeah. One phase. Continuous rating. And then the plates in there. The plate? Yeah, 1980. Oh yeah, yeah. The cement mix of plate. It does have on it somewhere, I ordered it. Is. Yeah, 1980 lot. It's got a lot of different uh, thingy. Sadly half the plate's missing but... Another problem it had throughout its life was... Uh, I don't know if you can see it. Oh, the... Uh, Where it almost cut yeah, through the... It cut uh, through the actual... Yeah, yeah, that there. yeah, that's how much play it's had, isn't it? I mean, you've got to admit, that is pretty nice, that. It's great, it works well, you know. <laughs> that's what you call... Uh, it's even worse when the belt won't tie, it? it goes both, you know, always. 
But that's what makes this gear put up with all the yeah. knocks in there. Yeah. If it wasn't for the plate it's got, that's it, it wouldn't turn. <laughs> it was actually seized when I got it out because this thing wasn't pretty it's much not being used. Not being used for five years, five is it? Years, yeah. yeah. It's been left outside in all the rain and everything. Yeah. Still good. Just WD-40, you know, that's all it needs. Keeps going. But that's enough on that thing. Yeah, <laughs> that's it. Anyway, guys and girls, we need to go. We need to get in the house. We've got the food ready. Chippy, actually. Dead nice. Looking forward to it. Mm -hmm. Fish and chips are very British, eh? For you guys over in America. Don't know if you guys ever have that, actually, fish and chips, but... ho. Oh. If you've never tried it, you want to try and find yourself an English fish and chip somewhere. Pretty sure there's some in America somewhere. You know, go go for one, get it. So nice. Really good. Get yourself a battered cod or something like that. Or battered sausage. Where's that hammer? So good. Hammer, I think, is down there somewhere. Anyway, that's enough on that. We've got to tidy up and get in the house. Thank you very much, guys and girls, for watching, of course. And I will catch you all on the next video. Which hopefully won't be too long. There's another bag behind you. I hope it ain't gonna rain. <laughs> yeah. Oh, what a building site. Oh, bags all over the place. Yep. Yeah. Thank you very much, guys and girls. And I'll catch you all in the next video. Peace out.